Welcome, Welcome to another episode of Cities In. Where today, uh, me, Deadline, and Zamfir are going to explore the the C64 Maxi. <laughs> they and, love it when you call it the Maxi. Yes, that's why I called it the Maxi. And we're also going to explore the Assembly 64 collection. The C64 Maxi? Or maybe it's the Mini, how do we tell? I'm going to assume that it's the Maxi. It says, with full size working keyboard. The Mini didn't have that. I'm kind of interested in this VIC-20 business. It's not called the VIC-20. I realize that. The C64. Why don't we open this bag? Yes, we realize there's other videos about the VC64 Maxi. This is our spin on it. And for being a City Zen watcher, you're gonna learn a really nifty trick, like getting all the software you'd ever want for your C64 Maxi. The C64 Maxi is so absorbent, it can hold all the software. How much percentage-wise more absorbent is it? Sure you got the right one. It goes on there. Let's read the instructions. Epilepsy warning. Yeah, it's got an epilepsy warning. Nice. Well, this manual sure is thin. It only looks thick because it's like two pages printed in 30 different languages. Alright, so what we're looking at here now is we've turned on the machine and we have downloaded the updated firmware for the VC64 Maxi and we're about to load it in. Right. The website is retrogames.biz slash VC64. Wow, really Windows 10? So we want to go into settings? Go into the wrench system information and it will detect it on the root of the thumb drive. Oh. And it will say, hey, do you want to apply the firmware? And we'll say yes, do you want to apply the firmware? Apply. Applying firmware. Affirmative. And now it's applying the firmware. Did you read about what this firmware upgrade will do? It doesn't fix the most annoying issue. <laughs> Reboots after it's done, it looks like. Yay. Let's go see if they made any changes in the carousel. Okay, now that we've got the firmware updated for the VC64 Maxi, we're going to show you the carousel mode, and as you can see, there's quite a lot of games that come installed with the system, including two VIC-20 games. But we're also going to now show you how to add more games to the system using Assembly64. Um, as you know from our um, holiday special for New Year's Eve, we're big fans of Assembly 64, 
and look for any opportunity we can to spread the news about what a fantastic uh, program that is. And you can get the URL to download your own copy of Assembly 64 in the video description below. HTTP colon slash slash hackerswithstyle.ddns.net slash assembly slash index dot html But well, we've already installed it. We have. We have already installed it. You just download it by clicking the download. And as you can see, we've already put it onto our hard drive. So that's in the folder C Assembly 64. And what you want to do is you want to run this program here, Assembly 64 application. Boom. And you've got Assembly application. Of course, you'll need to register, but we've already done that. Don't worry, I'll cut out all the empty space. Will you? Yes. And all the dumb stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the video will be three seconds long. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> the end. <laughs> all right, well, there we are. All right. So now it's shown up. And yes, we're reusing the same same thumb drive that we had downloaded Coffin OS to, so there we are. Thanks to the miracle of, you know, reflashable thumb drives. You might have to restart assembly for it to yeah. recognize it. Yeah, let's restart assembly. <clears throat> Assembly's great, because you get all kinds of software. You just download it right to your thumb drive. You might have to add a new installation. Maybe right click on it or something. Add a new location. Yeah, add a new location. Or add the root of this drive here. Select folder. Yeah, it pops up as a D. Um, yeah, right, update and install all. So okay, we'll... and install all should. And then we'll just fast forward through this part. Now, I think we ought to leave the entire thing in the video. Maybe somebody will watch it. We need the view time. Or I could also, like, clip them back to back and put 10 hours of. That's right, 10 hours. <laughs> 10 incredible hours in here. Just. <laughs> Now you can call it an ASMR video too. Whoa. 10 hours of downloading Assembly 64 plus ASMR. You're welcome. So, this is Assembly 64. And you can see that we've got, um, we've got a bunch of folders for, you know, things like demos, games. If we navigate into, let's say, a game. Oh, so that's why we've got launch. So we can launch the program with the second button because that's a PRG file. Oh. I guess we can just go straight to launching it. This is such a good port of Brocky on. Yeah, we're gonna go load a disk. Well, Scuttlebutt, Scuttlebutt 64. So there we are, now we've got Scuttlebutt 64 in our drive. So that's the rightmost button to return. I guess we could just launch the disk directly with the Should rocket, but we're gonna type it in because, you know, that's the way we do. That's the way we do. I mean, you got a keyboard, why not use it? You know what I mean? That loaded pretty dang fast. That loaded pretty dang fast. 
Yeah, I think it's got a fast loader that you can turn on and off. That's pretty nice. <laughs> no diarrhea flood. Make sure to have that set on. This is the high quality content that we're bringing to you, our viewers. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've never seen this before. Maybe you should stream the games before you play them. It's a good thing we're not live. Catch the waste in your waste bucket. Watch out for those diarrhea floods. <laughs> what a classic. <laughs> Alrighty. You should demonstrate for the viewers what it looks like to play on. There you go. <clears throat> I'm kind of interested in seeing this diarrhea flood, to be honest. And you know, thank gosh. Attack wave four, a change of fart. I wish you got to avoid the farts. <laughs> Butt hurt gauge over there. So every time you hit the thing, it causes the butt hurt gauge to move to the right. <laughs> oh my lord. If I were just going on memory, I'd say, wow. Yeah. They nailed the keyboard. Here, let me, let me try something on this thing. You know, what we gotta do for any time we're doing a common or basic screen. We gotta do the classic. Well, everybody does that, but no, you didn't let me finish. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> and this is the old classic, isn't it? Uh oh. Whoa. That didn't register. So, and then let's make 50, no, 40. We're going in line, right? And here we want to, for I equals zero to 60. How did you know? You knew. 50 yeah. next. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, you know, you you get you get good points with me for at least not trotting out, you know, printing your name over and over and over. Mm, you forgot a line number. Oh, you're correct. You know what this is going to do, right? Yes, this is the strobe program. Strobe light program. I wrote this. I wrote this. Oh, oh. this is awesome. <laughs> So if you turn the lights off. When you run this program, it'll create a strobe light effect in your room, right. which we can't really demonstrate. Maybe we'll get a good enough camera someday to demonstrate that. The DC64 Maxi has a problem. It does not allow you to swap joystick ports through its interface. Any developer could make a Commodore 64 game and there weren't any standards as to which was the main port. So this is a problem because 
you don't know whether or not you're going to get port 1 game or port 2 game. Now to get around this you have to go in and rename files with underscore and then a certain string and we're going to take a look at that here. So on zc64minizone.com slash how to here are the file name options that you have to change in order for the program to work. So if you put an underscore J1, it sets the primary joystick port as port 1. If a second joystick is connected, it automatically uses port 2. And then J2, it's the reverse of that. So you have to go in, if you don't have two joysticks, and rename the files, which I don't really like. They should have a built-in feature. They should. But, you know, lacking that, you could just plug in a second USB joystick. Could. And then just switch between them. Right. But we don't have that right now. Well, I mean, we do. We just have to go find it. Well, that's what I'm saying. We don't right. have it right here, right now. There's other options, too. I'm packing up to move, so. There's AD, which turns on accurate disk drive mode. I guess that's if you're having problems with a fast disk, fast loader on a disk. Um, there's RO, which makes the disk appear read-only, so you can't make any changes to the disk. NI disables the drive icon from appearing on screen during disk loading. So you can put that in there as one of the options if you don't want to see that. And then TN runs as an NTSC C64 and TP runs as a PAL C64. So there you go. Down here it shows you some examples. If you want to string some together you don't have to put an underscore in between each one. No. There you go. Yeah. But the shame of it is is that for something that is really kind of a consumer out of the box and granted they shouldn't somehow be responsible for making sure that every every disk image you find is somehow compatible with their with their product. But that user experience is pretty poor. You yeah, know, it really is. Around this, you know, either you have two joysticks, you know, and, and a software switcher option just like the virtual keyboard seems like that would be such a an easy slam dunk option for them to have. So yeah, all of the problems with the C64 here are problems that can be fixed in future firmware versions. I mean, there's nothing bad in the hardware itself. The fact that we've already seen new firmware revisions is really encouraging. It's not like something that they just threw out there on the market, washed their hands of, and, and abandoned. You know, I really wish that the joystick worked the way we wanted them to. That, you know, we had a software switch for switching between them. You know, but that's something that they can entirely address in a future release. Aside from that, I think it's a really solid and it's a great product. And I just don't think that these things that are kind of minor should detract from whether or not you should you should buy one of these or not. It's a good, solid product. Oh yeah, I think it's pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's just it, it's awesome that you can go to the store and buy something like this again. I mean, it's it's 1985 all over again. Yeah, just simply for what it is, a Commodore 64 Maxi. Maxi? Yeah, it is. It is. It, it, it is a Maxi, isn't it? It's, it's the Maxi. You know, and buying one of these for Jumpman alone is worth it. Well, that's about all the time we have left for this episode. If you know about any utilities that convert file names to add the options, let us know in the comments. Until next time, this is Deadline with CityZoom.